Hi, my name's Wes, and I'm uh, with Rebuilt Briars, and I'm going to show you today how to use the pipe retort kit that we put together for you. And uh, before we do that, I want to give you a little bit of my philosophy about cleaning a pipe. The pipe we're going to be using today in the demonstration has been reamed. It has had the salt treatment done to the bowl, salt and alcohol treatment done to the bowl, and it has already had the stem cleaned. Uh, with a bristle pipe cleaner and with a regular pipe cleaner run through it several times until they came out pretty well clean. Uh, I, I generally go ahead and do that when I'm cleaning instead of just using the pipe retort. The pipe retort is a great tool but to get a pipe really really clean especially in a state pipe I don't know where the estate pipe's been uh, or if I'm doing it for a customer I want to make sure it's absolutely clean, almost as clean as it was when it was brand new, with the exception of a little bit of cake left inside the bowl. So I'm going to go over with you today how to use the pipe retort I've put together for you and uh, show you how it works. we be working outside today, so if there's a little bit of wind in the background causing a little bit of a problem, I apologize for that. We'll, we'll do our best to keep that to a minimum. But I want to go over what was inside the kit you got. This is very similar to the kit that you received. Uh, when you open it up, uh, these big things here are test tube holders or clamps. Put those there. Uh, I put some cotton balls in there for you. I put a syringe in there for you. This is a 3cc syringe uh, to make filling up the, the volumetric flask a little bit easier for you. I put in a length of tubing. You should have about a foot. Uh, this is a little short, but this is just for demonstration. And then wrapped up in this paper is going to be um, the volumetric flask that I sent out. Now, there's also some zip ties that I included. I'll be honest with you, I have never, ever used zip ties when I've been doing a retort. Some people do. I just put them in there for your option so I don't have them sitting out here right now. Um, when you unwrap this, uh, you're going to... Uh, find your little five milliliter volumetric flask in there and there are reasons why I like a volumetric flask over a test tube and we talked about those in the forum a little bit um, I have never had one of these break in shipping if it did break for some reason uh, just shoot me an email let me know that the one I sent you broke and I will send you out a new one uh, I've got lots of these one of the things I will tell you is a lot of times these volumetric flasks, when they're made, they're actually uh, blown into a form. And so sometimes these tops are different diameters. Sometimes they're a little bit wider, a little bit narrower than others, and uh, can make the tubing a little hard to get on and off. But I'll show you how to deal with that as well. Now, in addition to all the things that we sent you there, you're going to need a couple more things. You're going to need alcohol. I use isopropyl 91% alcohol. Uh, you can use 99% alcohol if it's available where you are. You can use 151 rum. You can use a very high proof whiskey. Uh, whatever works for you. I like using isopropyl alcohol. Uh, so that's what we're going to use. You're also going to need a heat source. Now I didn't include one in the kit. I meant to do it and put a votive cam candle in there for you. But I'll be honest with you. I had all these packaged up. And in the box, it was ready to put labels on them as, as people sent me their orders. And as it turns out, I forgot to put the <laughs> votive candles in. So you will need to get a heat source. If you use a candle, I will go ahead and tell you that it's going to blacken this glass on the outside when you use it. No, no big deal, really. I have a dog back in, barking in the background. <laughs> no, no big deal. Just one second. Sorry about that, I had to take care of a barking dog, but as you can see right here, um, I was saying if you use a candle, the outside of this will get blackened with soot. It's no big deal, just wipe it off. This one's actually been used before as a retort, and as you can see, all the black's just been wiped right off. But today, for what we're going to be doing, because I want you to see this very, very well, uh, we are going to be using Sterno. Uh, any of the canned heat products will work great. This is the small can. It's a 2.6 ounce can. Uh, I like using these. It's a gelled alcohol on the inside. It's real easy to light, real easy to uh, work with. So uh, we'll be using that today as well. Of course, then the last thing you need, 
as a pipe to clean. And this is a certified Purex. It's uh, Martin on the shank there, and you can also see the stem logo. And I have already reamed this pipe. Oh, looks like there's a hair in it. I've already reamed this pipe for you, and I've already cleaned up uh, the shank and the stem as much as possible. I've also cleaned up um, this stinger. Um, it's a little pitted on the end, but when I got this, it was completely black. Uh, you almost couldn't tell that it had any form to it. But uh, anyway, we are going to use the pipe retort on this. Uh, I have also, uh, if you're wondering, stripped the wax finish off of here. Uh, getting ready to redo the bowl. And of course, there is some oxidation on the stem and some discoloring. I haven't even addressed that yet. So, so far what we've done is we've reamed and we have salt treatment and we have done uh, a bristle brush in both the stem and in the shank. So, we will get started on showing you how to set all this up. Tell you that you need and that is a fire extinguisher. You're going to be dealing with uh, boiling alcohol here and the vapor can be flammable as well as the liquid. And so this is a first alert. Um, fire extinguisher. It's a, a home fire extinguisher. You can pick up at any big box store. That's where this one came from and it works well. Make sure you know how to use it. Make sure the people around you know how to use it. Okay, with that being said, let's get started with what we're going to do here. Um, the first order of business is to get your tubing onto your flask. Now, uh, sometimes this can be a little tricky, especially if this, this top part is open. Uh, this stuff's really kind of tough and it doesn't want to open up, so I'm going to give you a suggestion. If you have a hard time getting it on and you can't get it stretched over the top, put this in in boiling water just for a few seconds, let it get good and hot, and then, and then cool it off a little bit so that you can handle it. And that will release uh, some of the tension in the, in the tubing. But we're going to try to get this on without, without having done that today, so here we go. And here's the best way to do that, I think, is you're just going to kind of have to work it on and pull and stretch and work and push and pull and stretch. And you will get it on there. It might not look pretty, but it'll get on there. In this situation where we've got it started, um, and that's the important part, what I'd do is I'd just put my thumb right there to hold it, and then I would pull it all this way to try to even it up. Oops, came off. There we go. Now, I'll tell you another trick I'll use sometimes. This isn't really cooperating, so what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of the alcohol on my fingers and basically just use it to wet the outside of the glass tube and dry my hands off. And sometimes that will act as just enough of a lubricant to help get that on there. See how it's wanting to push out now and slip on? Ta-da! A little bit of alcohol works as a lubricant. All right, so now we're just going to take it and work it down a little bit. Don't be afraid to tug it and push it. And there's going to be a little bubble bulge right there at the top. And you just want to get down past that little bulge, and you're fine. So, now, you don't need this much tube. Um, you really need just enough to fit over the stem of the pipe. So what I would do is I would take a pair of shears, kitchen shears or scissors, and I would cut it off right about there. You got about two fingers widths worth sticking out the end of your tube. Okay? So the next thing we need to do is to put some alcohol in here and get this ready to go. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my syringe and I'm going to go put it in my alcohol bottle and, and fill up my syringe. Let me do that. That'll be off camera. And I've got alcohol in there now. And unfortunately, this isn't a taper fit, but <laughs> it, 
it will allow you to to push it down into the into the uh, volumetric flask and I'll get another one all right now I filled it up a little bit too high I really I really want it just below the rubber here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shake a little bit out you'll that'll be off camera and let me go see what my dogs are barking at turn that okay sorry about that now I've got this volumetric flask full of alcohol you can see it stops right below the rubber uh, rubber tubing and <clears throat> so now we're gonna put the pipe on this end and it's the same kind of situation if you want to put a little bit of alcohol on your fingers to, to rub on the pipe uh, on the bit uh, it'll make it a little bit easier to get in there but the key is you just want it stretched on now once you get it on if you wanted to put uh, a strip a zip tie right here uh, you certainly could but I'll be honest with you I've never had a situation where this wanted to come off so I feel it's unnecessary so we will take our pipe and I will, what I'll do is I'll start at one corner and just kind of hold that with my finger and then just stretch it over the other side like that and now we're just going to work it down a little bit using my finger to hold one side and pulling down on the other whoops came off and you can see a little bit of alcohol got on the stem and boy it just slid right on and so we've got we've got it hooked to the pipe we've got the other end hooked here to the thing we've got just a very small space between them which is what we want and then the last thing we need to do is we need to put cotton balls down in this end and I'll tell you why they don't have to be super tight but if this thing really gets boiling or if it creates steam last thing you want is it coming out and burning your hand so that's kind of like a safety feature also on pipes where I'm not redoing the finish it tends to protect the finish as well so that's what we're going to do um, the last thing that you can do is you can use these test tube holders they clamp right here uh, if you feel that it's uncomfortable and getting way too warm uh, you don't want to risk burning your fingers because this end is going to be over uh, your heat source you can use the test tube holders and as you see they just close up around it right there and they give you something to hold on to uh, so that your fingers don't have to be there now I'm going to go over a couple of things here real quick um, we don't have the heat source lit yet but once we do um, when you're holding it over the heat source what I find is you want to hold it at about a 45 degree angle and you want the bowl of the pipe to be at about the same level as the bulb here on the volumetric flask um, the theory behind that is as it boils up it'll run into that tube and kind of down in the shank and what you're going to see me do is once it's boiling and bubbling in there I'll let that go for a few seconds and then I'll move it off the heat and when I do I'll lift up that bowl a little bit uh, get a little bit of gravity helping us out let to pull it back down in there also the vacuum created when this cools down will also pull it in there uh, and then when we go back to heat you'll see me drop this back down again we'll let some boil in and then when we come off I'll lift it up a little bit like this now it takes a little bit of playing around with to, to really perfect your method uh, I generally don't use this I will use it for this demonstration because it's included in the kit I typically just hold it right here with my finger and I've never had a problem with it but we will use this since it's included in the kit so we're gonna light the alcohol we're gonna try to and since we're outside that flame is very hard to see but it is there so yeah you can feel it so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take and, and put this over our heat source and we're going to give it a minute to start boiling. And actually hear it as well. Now as this alcohol starts to boil you actually hear kind of a little bit of a sizzling sound and uh, then you will you'll see it start to boil and, and go into the into the end of the pipe. So one second here. Since we're outside it's a little bit harder winds blowing a little bit so we'll we'll give it a second there we go 
and now it's starting to boil you can see it it's not a very you know exciting boil but it's a boil all right now we'll pull it off and we'll hold the bowl up a little bit and we'll let it cool as you can see it's still boiling and there we go it cooled a little bit and some got pulled back and dropped back down into the pipe okay and you can see it's still got some got some crud in there so this time we're going to put it in I'm not going to hold the bowl quite as low this time I just know from experience that's going to work best there goes the boiling and now we come off and as it cools it'll actually pull some back in and there you go you can see it turned dark brown that time when it pulled it back in you see that that is all that gunk and stuff that's still built up in there that did not come out with scrubbing okay so what we'll do is we'll give it another go now you can see that this alcohol level is definitely lower than it was and some of it's going all the way up into the bowl and it's not getting brought back down and into the um, stem it's getting soaked up by our alcohol but that's okay not going to hurt a thing so we'll go right here again we'll let it boil see if we can get us a really good boil this time and again it's going to boil much faster inside we're working outside um, winds blowing a little bit and everything else you can see a really good boil going there all right there it goes it's going in and I'm gonna tilt this up and if you wait just a second any that went in there should come out actually yeah there it comes it just got darker I just saw it get darker so some of it came out some of it's getting soaked up by the cotton ball and again that's fine and we'll do one more show you what I'm going to do on this one. I'll do something a little unconventional. I'm going to tilt it a little bit more since that level is getting kind of low. A lot of it's turning to vapor. That's fine. I'm going to do this. And let's watch what happens here. Let's see if any more comes out. I actually poured that in that time and I want to show you kind of why I did that. You can see what's coming out is that yucky yucky brown but I want you to see this too. I mean it's oh that's nasty brown right there. I don't know if you can tell or not but light has a hard time getting through that right now. I'm going to put the cap on that sterno so it can cool down. The can is very hot right now so be careful. Um, you can see right here um, what happened at this end quite a lot did get down into the bowl which is fine it's not going to hurt a thing that's why the cotton's in there to catch it and you can see the yuck and the schmutz that came out there um, some of it did come out as a vapor right here around the top and it affected the finish a little bit which is fine I'm going to refinish it I didn't care so much on this one but um, what we have here down in the bottom is a bunch of junk and gunk that did not get pulled out the right way now or did not get pulled out by scrubbing I should say now if you're really careful and you don't let as much make it to the bowl um, this thing will still be full up to here okay just as it starts to boil you get uh, a little bit in and pull it off immediately with the top tilted up or instead of having the bowl lower than that you can have the bowl you know sitting level and this piece angled downward it'll still gonna boil up in there but you're not gonna have as much hit the bowl now on this one I let it hit the bowl for a couple of reasons and one of them was there was a lot of junk still down in the bowl at the draft hole so I actually wanted some of it to get through what I'll do right now is I'm gonna let this dry or excuse me I'm gonna let this cool and I'm gonna wipe this off I'm gonna, excuse me I'm gonna take this off and if you look right here where the stem was screwed in you can see that some leaked out right here it wasn't really a liquid tight fitting 
Uh, as soon as it gets cooled off, I'll wipe this off. I'll get this good and clean. Um, I will refill this with alcohol, and I'll probably do this two more times on this pipe. Um, the other two times I, I do the heatings, I will make sure that the bowl's held more level, uh, and this will be tilted down so that not as much of it makes it all the way to the bowl. And also, just as it starts to boil, I will pull it almost off, pull it off almost immediately so that it all drains back right away. But you can see right there all the junk that uh, the scrubbing and all missed. And uh, you'll be amazed at how much junk you get out of your pipes using a retort along with your standard cleaning. Okay, you can see now this is, this is cooled down. It's very easy to handle. You can see a buildup of gunk back on the stinger here. Uh, that's just stuff that was heated up and pulled out and, and brought back across the stinger. Um, the pipe itself is looking pretty good. Um, and then, of course, if you look over here at the volumetric flash, you can see all the junk that got pulled out. Now, uh, you can also see where some of it uh, just got a little hot and got stained because the wind was blowing and was pushing against it. Now, all you have to do at this point is rinse this out, um, pour this out, rinse it out, use the syringe to put some more alcohol in the end and then do it again. Uh, but like I said on the next couple of heatings what I'll do is when I fill this up I'll only fill it up about halfway up the neck and when I uh, am heating it up to a boil I won't let uh, I'll hold this more level than, than angled down I will hold it level and that way not as much will get up and pool inside the bowl. As a matter of fact if you look in the bowl of this I don't know if you can see it but um, there's still alcohol down there drying out and so we'll just let that dry out that's no big deal um, that'll be fine uh, I'm also going to run another couple of pipe cleaners through this stem because it's, it's broken some gunk loose down in there and I just want to make sure I get all of it out um, once you go through a salt treatment and a pipe cleaner cleaning and a retort and then touch it up again on a pipe cleaner this thing is very very clean you won't have any ghosts left in there. Um, to personal pipes that I'm going to keep, I do a retort treatment at least once a year. Um, for estate pipes that I buy where I'm going to send those out to a customer or something like that, um, you know, they all get a salt treatment, a pipe cleaner cleaning, a retort, and a pipe cleaner cleaning again to make sure they're absolutely as clean as possible and not harboring any ghosts or flavors from old uh, tobaccos. Um, this right here, I'll clean it back up again so that it's nice and shiny and looks like new and uh, we'll be good to go. Uh, with that being said, I hope these instructions kind of get you along your way. If you run into any problems or, or have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me. I'll put my email address uh, at the bottom of the uh, video here. Of course, you can always reach me through the forums. My name through the forums is KF4BSB. And if any of you are ham radio operators out there, uh, that's also on my call sign. So I might talk to you on the air. But uh, I hope this helps. I, I really think this is the very best way in the world to get your pipe completely clean. And if there's anything I can ever do for you, please don't hesitate and let me know. Thank you.